Lesson 10.5, Word Problem Solving Time Intervals. So we're going to be solving word problems that involve elapsed time. We can use the strategy, draw a diagram to solve problems about time. We can draw a number line to find the answer to an elapsed time problem. We first started doing that in the last video, 10.4, which is linked in the description if you need it. We can also use analog clock faces to help us solve an elapsed time problem, but we're going to be focusing in on using number lines in this lesson. To find an ending time, we need the starting time and elapsed time we count on from the start time. To find a starting time, we need the ending time and the elapsed time we count back from the ending time. We count on forward or count backward any amount of minutes that makes sense. And to help us solve a word problem, we can circle or underline the question, circle or underline important facts, and choose a strategy we know. Tim is going to Chicago. His airplane leaves at 11.15 a.m. He needs to arrive at the airport 60 minutes before the flight. That way he knows he'll have enough time to go get his ticket or, you know, get on the plane. It takes 15 minutes to get to the airport, so he needs that amount of time to actually drive to the airport. He needs 30 minutes to get ready. So what time should Tim start getting ready? So we need to find what time Tim should get ready. And our important information is that the plane leaves at 11.15 a.m. That's important, so we can underline that. What's also important is that he needs to arrive at the airport 60 minutes before the flight. We can underline that. It is also important that he needs 15 minutes to get to the airport. And we need to know that it's going to be 30 minutes to get ready. So we need to underline 30 minutes to get ready. So now we have collected all the important information in the word problem. We can use a number line to help us. The airplane leaves at 11.15 a.m. There's 60 minutes that he needs to arrive before the flight, 15 minutes to get to the airport, and 30 minutes to get ready. What we do is, because we know the airplane leaves at 11.15, we need to find out when he gets ready, so we need to find the start time. Our number line is going to go from 11.15 a.m. and we're going to skip count backwards. And we're going to skip by the elapsed time. So from 11.15 a.m., 60 minutes is one hour, that'll put us at 10.15 a.m. Then we need 15 minutes to get to the airport, so we're going to go back 15 minutes. That puts us at 10 a.m. Then he needs 30 minutes to get ready. We're going to skip 30, and we'll be back at 9.30 a.m. So we know Tim should start getting ready at 9.30 a.m. or earlier, right? And we can check our answer by starting here at 9.30 and counting forwards the 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and 60 minutes to see if we end at 11.15 a.m. when his flight leaves. We go from 9.30 to 10, that's 30 minutes. Then we add 15 more minutes, so we're at 10.15. We add 60 minutes as an hour, and we get to 11.15 a.m. So yes, that worked. Emma gets out of school at 2.45 p.m. It takes her five minutes to walk home. Then she walks her dog for 15 minutes. She does her homework for 37 minutes. What time will it be when Emma finishes her homework? What do we need to find? We need to find what time it is when her homework is finished. The important information is that she's out of school at 2.45 p.m. We can underline or circle that important information. It's also important that it takes her five minutes to walk home. We can underline or we could circle that information. It's important that it's 15 minutes she spends walking the dog. We can underline that information. And it's important to know that it took 37 minutes to do her homework. 
so we can underline homework for 37 minutes. Now that we've gathered all our important information and we know what we need to find, we can start solving it. We can use a number line to help us. We know she's out of school at 2.45. That's gonna be our starting time. Then she has five minutes she walks home, 15 minutes to walk her dog, and 37 minutes to do her homework. We need to find what time it is when all of these things are finished. We start at our starting time, 2.45 p.m., and we add five minutes for her to walk home. Now it's 2.50 p.m. Then we add the 15 minutes, we skip the 15 minutes that she walks her dog. And going from 2.50 p.m. and doing 15 minutes, we've got 5, 10, 15 minutes. That puts us at from 2.50 to 2.55, then it becomes 3 o'clock, then 3.05 p.m. So 15 minutes has us at 3.05 p.m. Then she does 37 minutes of homework. We need to add 37 minutes to 3.05 p.m. We skip 37 minutes and we're at 3.42 p.m. Now 5 plus 15 plus 37 is equal to 57. 5 plus 15 is 20 plus the 37 makes it 57. So that's our total of elapsed time. This whole thing should be 57 minutes. We know Emma finishes her homework at 3.42 p.m. We can check our answer by counting back from the ending time of 3.42 p.m. the 37 minutes, the 15 minutes, and the 5 minutes back to 2.45 p.m. We can also check our answer by counting back the elapsed time, the entire 57 minutes from 3.42 p.m. And yes, we will land at 2.45 p.m. so we know we did it correctly. Emma wants to go to a carnival at 4.30 p.m. She also wants to go to a lecture about Apollo 11 at 7 o'clock p.m. at the local college. She needs 45 minutes to drive from the carnival to the college lecture. So how much time will she be able to spend at the carnival? What do we need to find? We need to find how long Emma can stay at the carnival. The important facts are she's going to be at the carnival at 4.30 p.m. It takes 45 minutes to drive to the lecture and the lecture begins at 7 o'clock p.m. We draw our number line and we know she needs to be at the lecture at 7 o'clock p.m. We know it takes 45 minutes to drive to the lecture, so we start at 7 o'clock p.m., our ending time, and we go back 45 minutes. That's going to put us at 6.15 p.m. Then the time between 4.30 p.m. and 6.15 p.m. is the time that she'll be able to spend at the carnival. So to find how long she can be at the carnival, 6.15 p.m. becomes our ending time. We draw our number line and we know that she's going to arrive at the carnival at 4.30 p.m. If we go one hour forward from 4.30 p.m., we'll be at 5.30 p.m. We need to get to 6.15. If we go another 30 minutes from 5.30, that'll make it an even 6 o'clock p.m. Then we can go another 15 minutes to 6.15 p.m. We went one hour plus 30 minutes plus 15 minutes. That's one hour and 45 minutes. So we know that Emma can stay at the carnival for one hour and 45 minutes. Now remember, you can go to my Facebook page in the image section, and I've got blank clocks that you can copy, paste, and print so that you can work with them. Bob got out of bed and ready for school. He spent 58 minutes getting dressed, eating breakfast, combing his hair, and brushing his teeth. He left for school at 7.30 a.m. So what time did he get out of bed? What do we need to find? We need to find the time that he got out of bed in order to do these things for 58 minutes. And we think 58 minutes is two minutes less than an hour, 60 minutes. We need to underline the important information it's important that he spent 58 minutes getting dressed and getting ready, 
and that he left for school at 7.30 a.m. We can count back one hour, because 58 minutes is so close to an hour. We can count back from 7.30 when he left to 6.30. Then we can count forward two minutes, one, two. And that puts us at 6.32 a.m. From 7.30 back to 6.30 is one hour, but from 6.32 to 7.30 is 58 minutes. So we know Bob got out of bed at 6.32 a.m. So we can use an hour to help us. Tala brushes her teeth for two minutes every morning and two minutes before bedtime every night. How many minutes does Tala spend brushing her teeth each week? So remember there are seven days in each week. We need to underline the important information. It's important to know that she brushes for two minutes in the morning, two minutes before bedtime, and they want to know how many minutes each week. So because she brushes her teeth a total of four minutes each day, two minutes in the morning and two minutes before bed, we can do four minutes times those seven days. Four times seven is equal to 28. So she spends 28 minutes each week brushing her teeth. Now we can also write the days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and put a four for the minutes of each day that she brushes her teeth. And we can add them up and we get 28 minutes. So remember, sometimes it may be easier to solve a word problem if we make a list or a table. If we know she does 28 minutes a week, but it wanted to know how many minutes she brushed her teeth by Wednesday night, we would know that that's one, two, three, four days. That would be 16 minutes by Wednesday night when she went to bed. Okay? So you can make a list or table if that'll help you. So here's a multiplication table. We can do any number times any number, and here's the products. You should have these multiplication facts memorized by now. You should know them as well as you know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. You should know them that quickly. And students, people who memorize their multiplication table, do better at math. They have it easier at math as they get older and go on to higher grades. So to help yourself, Make sure you have this multiplication table memorized from 0 to 10 at least, okay? If you don't have them memorized by now, you should definitely have them memorized before you start fourth grade, okay? Make sure when you're solving word problems that you circle or underline the important information, that you know what they're asking of you, that you know what you need to answer, and choose a strategy that you know how to do very well. In our next lesson, we're going to be talking about measurement, and we're going to be measuring in inches and fractions of inches. I hope I'll see you there, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.